Uh, the White House uh, facing growing backlash after the press secretary, Jen Psaki, we were just talking about, uh, appears to laugh off concerns about rising prices, delayed deliveries. Here's an example. It was clear in March of 2020 when COVID hit that, that the supply chains across the world had been disrupted, even as, as the sort of work to fight back against COVID proceeded, people, it was, it was crystal clear that things were not improving on supply chain. People couldn't get dishwashers and, and furniture and treadmills delivered on time, not to mention all sorts of other things. So why the is it- The tragedy of the short, the treadmill that's delayed. Right. Well, the New York Post calling out her response with a headline that reads, it's not funny. Well, joining us now to discuss is Republican Congressman from California, Jay Obernolte. Thank you very much for joining us, Congressman. Your initial response to uh, the White House press secretary there, Jen Psaki, uh, basically saying that this is really just a problem based on your status uh, in this country. Well, I think it's unconscionable for the White House to pretend that federal spending has not had an impact on the supply chain. Any economist will tell you that dumping $6 trillion into the economy over the last 18 months is going to have an impact, and it's causing not only inflation, but it's causing uh, these inflationary pressures that we're seeing on the supply chain that's impacting every segment of our economy. Uh, you're a former businessman. Could you talk a little bit about the business people you talk to, what they're experiencing right now with supply chain problems? Well, certainly. Uh, I had a conversation just last night with a businessman in my district who's paying four and five times as much for each container that he ships with his product across the Pacific. And he has no choice but to pass those costs on to the people that he sells to. And that's what's causing this inflationary pressure. Uh, if you look at the amount of money that's been dumped into the economy by federal spending over the last 18 months, it's staggering. I mean, it's, it's as much extra federal spending as the wages of every American put together. Together. And for the White House to completely ignore that, I mean, I think is really ignoring the reality of what's going on. Yeah, and speaking of ignoring reality, uh, Jen Psaki once again, uh, pushing this narrative that we've heard before that President Biden's Build Back Better plan won't add a dime to the national debt. Listen to this. The details. The president still believe that up. Build Back Better will not add a dime to the national debt? Correct, it won't. Why, would he, why, why should Americans believe that? Because it won't. Go ahead. What if taxes that he says he wants to you know, get more taxes in? What if it doesn't happen? What if the economy goes sour? Lots of things can happen. Mm -hmm. What are you you're going to tell from up there future generations, not even born yet, that they're not on the hook for this? Is that right? That's right, and hopefully you'll report accurate information yourself. Mm. Your response. Well, I, I mean, remember that Build Back Better is simultaneously the biggest spending package in the history of our country, paired with the biggest tax increase in the history of our country. And of course, we actually haven't seen the text of the bill that we'll be voting on. I mean, it's, it's 1,600 pages is what's passed the House, but no one knows exactly what's going to be in it. I hope we take the time to have the Congressional Budget Office score it so we'll know exactly uh, what we're talking about in terms of adding to the national debt. But uh, we run right now a $2 trillion deficit. So uh, think about that. Every dollar that you add on to that deficit is going to just be a, a problem that, uh, that future generations of Americans are going to have to deal with. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's unconscionable to pretend that, uh, that anything otherwise is, is the case. Thank you, Congressman. By the way, anything interesting you were voting on this afternoon? Well, this afternoon we have suspension bills. So those are bills that are supposed to be non, uh, uh, they're supposed to be uh, bipartisan. But I think what's interesting is what we're not voting on, which is uh, all of the things that we thought we were coming back to Washington to vote on. The, the infrastructure bill, you know, where is that? Uh, it's something that uh, the House passed that we're waiting for the Senate to, to come back with the, uh, the reconciliation bill on it. And of course, everyone's wondering what's going on with the Build Back Better plan, this reconciliation package, this huge tax increase. When will we see action on that? Hopefully the answer is never, but, uh, you know, uh, hope springs eternal. All right. Congressman Obernolte, thank you so much, sir.